as we continue looking at sound through instruments, right, specifically string instruments and pipe instruments, today we're going to take a look at, at how sound is produced through open-ended and closed-ended pipes, so our pipe instruments, how this looks mathematically, and how it looks in terms of the wave structure that is formed. So what we look at here for our open-ended pipes, we have our first, second, third, fourth, and fifth harmonics, respectively. And our fundamental is, again, our first harmonic. So what we see is in an open-ended pipe, that means both ends are open. Unlike strings, where it was a closed system, we had nodes at both ends. For an open-ended pipe, we're looking at anti-nodes at both ends because both ends are open. So a fixed end, we're always going to see a node. An open end, we're always going to see an anti-node. So the, as waves leave pipes, they're going to leave at the crest of the trough, right? They're going to leave at their amplitude, which is going to be at an anti-node. Our fundamental frequency here for an open-ended pipe, we still see half of a wavelength generated. However, if you note the node in the middle of the pipe, there is now a quarter wavelength on the left side of the pipe and a quarter wavelength on the right side of the pipe. And as we flow through the rest of this, so our second harmonic, we've added a half wavelength. Our third harmonic, we've added a half wave. Our fourth and fifth harmonics, respectively, we continue to add half of a wavelength, which is just like what showed up for string instruments. We see a half wavelength each harmonic that we go. Which tells us that then for our second harmonic, we have one full wave because we have a quarter, half, quarter. For our third harmonic, we have one and a half full waves. We have quarter, half, half, quarter. For our fourth harmonic, we have two full waves, quarter waves on the ends, one and a half waves in the middle, gives us a sum of two full waves. The only thing that's different is how the waves are going to leave. We're now we're leaving at that anti-node versus leaving at the node. Same thing is going to occur in terms of our timbre and in, and in terms of the note that we hear. The note that we are going to hear is going to be the frequency of the fundamental, right? That's going to be the pitch that we get. The timbre is then going to be based on the harmonics that are present behind. And our harmonics are still going to be whole number multiples of the fundamental frequency. If the fundamental frequency is 700 hertz, that means our second harmonic will show up at 1400, our third will show up at 2100, and so on and so forth. If the wavelength that we observe of the fundamental frequency is 50 centimeters, our second will be at 25 centimeters, third at 12.5, and so on and so forth as it gets smaller. The pattern that we then observe is identical to what we had for string instruments. Note the formula is the exact same. Rationale behind why the math works out the same is because the end behaviors for a string instrument versus an open-ended pipe, it's the end behavior is anti-node, anti-node, as opposed to node, node. But because we have the same way that it our, our end behaviors match, we can see that our wave pattern is going to be just slightly shifted a little bit to the left or to the right. We end up having a phase shift is what we get. So instead of seeing you know, a traditional crest or a traditional trough in the fundamental, we get a quarter crest or we get a half crest and a half trough, right? which is going to be a quarter wave each to get us to that half wave. We still produce every harmonic here. F sub n is still going to represent what our frequency is, <clears throat> n being the harmonic number. Math works out the same as it did before. So our harmonic value n, speed of wave in air, as opposed to being speed of the wave on the, on the string, and the length of the pipe as opposed to the length of the string. Formula looks identical. So again, our longer pipes, just like a longer string, is going to produce a lower frequency compared to a shorter pipe with speed moving at the same speed through it. Obviously, if you have an air temperature and you can find that speed of sound, let's you take wind chimes, for example, those shorter wind chimes are gonna produce a higher frequency, a higher pitch, so a higher note, than a longer pipe, which would produce a lower frequency, thus a lower note. 
Now for closed pipes, things change a little bit. Note the fundamental frequency in the top left here, only producing a quarter wave. And then we'll look at what is now our third harmonic, which is going to produce three quarters of a wave. And then we get to our fifth harmonic, which is going to produce one and a quarter waves. There's no even harmonics that are being produced here. Look at the way that the, that the wave leaves the pipe. We have a closed end, so that closed end is going to be fixed, just like the string, so we have a node at that fixed end. When the sound moves through that pipe, and as it leaves, it's going to leave the open end of the pipe, which is going to be an anti-node. So we have a node on the closed end, an anti-node on the open end. So the smallest possible frequency that could be generated is going to be resultant from a quarter wave that is going to be the length of that pipe. That's going to be our true fundamental. If you go back to a string, you can't produce a quarter of a string, a quarter of a wave on a string with both ends fixed. Well, here we have a fixed end which, which must be a node, an open end with, with much with which must be an anti-node. So the longest wavelength that you can create, the lowest frequency that you're going to get, is based on a quarter wave of a node and an anti-node. Just like we saw with strings and with open-ended pipes. Our next harmonic values are still going to add a half a wavelength. But what we see is that half wavelength, so for our third harmonic, for example, we're going to have three quarters of a wave. So instead of that frequency to wavelength being able to go, hey, times two, times three, times four, what we see is this can only be times three, times five, times seven, times nine, etc., based on the relationship between how much of a wave we get across the length of that pipe. Numerically, how this shows up for us then, it's n, our harmonic number, times v, speed of wave through the air. Now we're divided by 4L instead of 2L. And again, it's because our fundamental frequency is that length of the pipe is a quarter of a wave. So four times the length of that pipe will give you your wavelength. And then as you go down to that third harmonic, here we see three quarters of a wave is equal to the length. And then we go down to the bottom, right, our fifth harmonic, that's going to be five quarters of a wave. It's all based on those quarters. So we get five quarters, seven quarters, nine quarters, right, so on and so forth. That's how it expands. We physically can't produce an even number harmonic here. Similar pattern that we do see, though, is that the longer the pipe is, as long as the speed of the wave stays the same, the longer that pipe, the lower the note is going to be produced, the lower frequency, the lower pitch. The shorter that pipe is, we're going to hear higher frequencies, so higher notes and higher pitches. There's just a little bit about your pipe instruments. Again, note the difference between that 4L and the 2L on the bottom from closed pipes to open pipes respectively. Note the wave behaviors at the ends, right? Your node versus anti-node behavior. And most importantly, that closed pipes will only produce odd harmonics.